Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today we're doing another episode of our Saurian Devlog. So these two have been a bit short because they have been preparing for this uh, new lovely breeding update that they've managed to put up so all your dinosaurs can breed now. So uh, with that they've kind of been mainly squashing bugs and things like that but it's been really awesome that it's finally out and released to everyone so if you want to uh, make babies you can go do that now on Saurian if you download the dev branch. Oh, not the dev branch, the uh, bug testing kind of public branch. So that's really, really awesome. But, um, yeah, since there wasn't too much updates within these two months, I've decided to obviously consolidate them into just two. And uh, we'll have a look at 111 through uh, 112. So I'm really excited to get some of this. So this is for April. So um, in terms of programming, we've got uh, Henry coming in. So hello, everyone. This month, Henry and I have been uh, crazy... Uh, this is programming, this is Ali, I think, actually. So, hello everyone, this month Henry and I have been crazy bug hunting, squashing, and hunting, again. All the bugs that we can find in preparation for public testing. While doing internal testing, our QA has caught a couple of oversights in the initial design of the nesting season uh, system. I'll go over it with you. Uh, two, I'll go over two of them, I mean. Uh, flooding does not affect nest health. This one was a complete oversight on my part, as keen scientists and birds enthusiasts will know warm egg Plus cold water equals no good. Yes, uh, it takes a lot of scientists and birds enthusiasts to know that. Um, so we have, uh, that has, well, that has been corrected. So the future when our players are looking for suitable nesting grounds, keep it on the high ground. So if you want to make sure that you nest good, uh, you have warm egg. So make sure keep away from cold water. Just remember that's very important. And um, we also have this. There is no indicator for roosting time. Also an oversight that gave way to iteration. As a general rule, we try to stay clear of traditional UI elements in games, such as icons and arrows as a mini-map. But for this one, we decided to do a bit of randomized egg wobbling to indicate health and how close they are to hatching. And after a certain amount of times passed, uh, the eggs will shake at random intervals. With the closer they are to hatching, the closer these intervals get. Which, and this is all 100% random, so sometimes you'll see all of them do a little wobble, and other times maybe just one. So it kind of just gives you a little visual indicator rather than you buy to really um, understand and show that your eggs are getting close to hatching. So there are just these are just some of the more noticeable or outrageous ones. There's also been a bunch of others in the back end that we've taken uh, care of, so that once it gets to public hands, it's going to be as bug free as we can get it. So this is kind of getting these two most obvious kind of oversights and then getting it to the people so if you've already played it you've probably seen a lot of these and experienced these and as while well, henry and i are preparing for public testing zane and i uh, zane has resumed work uh, resumed his work on the rehaul of our ui and we'll show previews of that new ui in past devlogs i think you've seen that and zane has now moved on to working his magic to rework the internal mechanisms of the system for easy use and better flow and performance that's really awesome and this is a picture i took which is really really funny um as a little extra have a picture from one of our qa testers joe so this is me took of his little watermelon baby he has a whole fruit stand uh, at some point but they're all too unruly and getting him to pose his picture was next to impossible and that is very true but I am very happy at this picture that I took. Um, I think it just looks wonderful, especially with the uh, mummy, t uh, mummy triceratops there. It's the same mummy T-Rex, definitely not T-Rex, but you can have the other wonderful baby here who fits in perfectly with camouflage. It's really just perfect. And they're really, really cute little gremlins. But I think as a good mum, I think I did a good job of that. And yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> I remember that. That was so cool. And now I've got something from Jake. So how wonderful we got something from Jake. So this month I got to work on some more of the juvenile Tyrannosaurus animations. Not much to explain, just uh, powering through the list, porting over animations from the hatchlings, and treating them to add some individual uh, individual variation and personality to the juvenile. So I uh, hope you uh, to show more soon. I've been cooking up more animations and more plant stuff in the background that I'll be excited to delve into in the future updates. So we can see this one is little Juvie Rex having a drink. So yeah. Little drink a drink. Came out rather nice. Yeah, big fan of that. Kind of how it dips and pulls up like that. That's really cool. So let's have a look at the next one. And this is taking a bite. So this one's having a feed. So let's uh, go from there. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm ripping apart. I'm numb. It's like a little wily e. coyote type thing. I really like that. You see, rip it apart. Yeah, like that. Really, really awesome. I think that really looks nice. Welcome one more time. 
God, I love the soy and Rex. I think it looks awesome. And I really think this animation is rather cute. So that'd be cool to, um, for everyone to have it when they finally get that as a playable. And now we've got the community spotlight for April. We can see this really wonderful picture. Let's see who is this that's done by. That was done by um, Ampmel. I believe you say that. Ampmel? Apumel? Oh, something like that. Uh, but we've got this wonderful uh, copy of that really famous picture that we've got going on with like the Triceratops swimming in the lake thing. I think I love that picture so much. It really makes it feel like the Triceratops is in the environment, things like that. And not the focus. And you can see, and we've gone really managed to kill this T-Rex. Uh, that's pretty impressive, managed to do that. And then we can see um, Gladiator Turkey has this really cute little uh, picture of... Um, uh, a little baby Dakota Raptor next to Blastemis. I believe that's the right uh, genus, but these guys are really, really cool. Really nice big turtle. And then we have someone who uh, smells. Oh, uh, smells. Uh, I keep singing because there's a place called Snells, um, Smells. Uh, made this Dakota, uh, Dakota Raptor um, osprey color on one of the Beasts of the Mesozoic Raptors. And I think that's really, really cool. I have a couple of the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians, and I like collecting models and things like that. So I think it's really cool that they managed to do that and go to paint it. And it looks really nice, actually. I'm a really big fan of how that came out. So yeah, next we've got 1012. So let's have a look at 1012. So this is for June. About June 3rd. So April, May. Yeah. June, this is John June 3rd, so this is pretty much the May one. So, hello everyone, we've been super busy, so let's get into it. So, Ale, starting us off, as some of you may know, we've put in the mating patch to our public testing branch, that was done in May, and we're busy fixing bugs and tightening the screws in preparation for the patch. However, it doesn't seem like, that doesn't mean that all the bugs, uh, no, However, this doesn't mean it's all been bugs non-stop, and part of the point of pushing our patches out for private and public testing is for getting feedback on these new systems and changes that we've implemented and correcting and reworking them when necessary. So let's talk about iteration. So um, early on during testing, we were made aware that people were confused with our instructions on how to build a nest, specifically when referred to the interact button. This was part blunder on my side as the interact button uh, was the name we had initially uh, internally and was not reflected anywhere else in game in part legitimately confusing keybinding so after given that some thought we agreed the community uh, with the community that the way we were doing it needed to change so a small uh, design discussion later talk as we read uh, binded the iteration key or interact key into the left mouse button uh, instead so I thought that was pretty good that was something I was talking about as is the button that's normally used for mouth stuff like biting, eating and drinking and this one felt more intuitive to us. So that's kind of the thing that I was talking about like kind of bringing it up to because it was originally I think it was the V button or um, one of the I, f I can't remember exactly but I think it was the V interact and it was really weird because usually you go left click is when you kind of bite something or right click is kind of a game just more similar to other games so I think that really helped a lot. And um, a small design discussion later, so you had that rebind, and along with the interact button debacle, we also noticed people were having trouble when it came to dropping leaves into the nest, and that was a blunder on uh, our side as well. I remember that as well. It was kind of the same thing. You had to press V to hold it and then put it back in. So when we first coded the drop whatever in your mouth mechanic, it was more of a fun trick with the interactions for using it somewhere else later, and then it became fell off to the wayside. And to the point we ended up reusing the original binding of the right mouse button for the aim camera activation and moving drop into the V key. So that's what it originally was. So V was drop. Um, so that I think that was kind of weird. And which, when we need a place where I grab and drop uh, food into the nests, it turned out to be super unintuitive. And I agreed with that. So part of the key binding rework, we decided to make the right mouse button context sensitive for ease of use. So now when players have food in their mouths, uh, right mouse button will only drop the food and not activate the camera aim mode. But if the mouse uh, is empty, then camera aim will activate normally. So that's a really, really helpful. I think that it really help uh, a lot of people just more intuitive. That was something I was big on because usually you think like in games, pick up is left uh, and drop is right. So it kind of is more intuitive with other games. And just makes it a lot easier than having to press V to drop. Because that's kind of weird. Especially when you, most people are kind of used to those kind of key bindings. I think keeping it as similar to most games as possible really helps the ease of getting into it. And um, and really the highlight here was that the 
Without input from our testers, both internal and public, uh, we may not have realized these issues. It's very easy to get lost in the weeds when we're looking through these individual systems and functions, and we are super thankful for our community members for their help testing and communicating with us. And shout out to our mods and QA for keeping an eye on the chats and follow up on the bug reports. We literally could not do this without y'all. Thank you, Aid. Ali, I really did a wonderful job there. Ali, wonderful job. Um, so we've got Zane and Jake coming up here. So this is another really awesome little thing. So among other things, over the past few months, we have been working uh, to make the most of our vegetation shader package we have. Not much to say about other than trees should be moving better than ever once we update the roster. These new vegetation shader allows a lot more detailed vertex, uh, vertex animations, help the environment look more alive than ever, and have to look at this little peak. So this is kind of those little, little things. Oh, that's awesome. So it looks like it's blowing in the wind. I think that's really, really cool. That really makes it feel alive because there's not a lot of movement, to be honest, in a lot of the trees in the game at the moment. So it's really cool to see uh, more like wind. So it feels like the world is just moving constantly and constantly there's things happening. And um, the blog spot is Animal Dakota Raptor. I haven't really had a look at that. Uh, I think there's some issues here. Let me try and reload it. Might have just been bad internet. Oh, here we are. So here is the better images so here we have blog post image by admiral dakota raptor that's actually a really nice image like you can see the adult and the two babies peeing on the trike baby trike there that's really awesome uh, by alice Soraday. i think that's believes how you say it and winder winderex i believe this looks really nice you can see the uh Edmontosaurus or an as they're cool in game walking around there i think this is really nice and then you can have by Fire Gator, you have this really, really nice picture. It reminds me of this art piece. I don't I don't know who I don't remember, but it's on DeviantArt. There's like a piece where there's a creek and then there's like a Ankylosaurus walking right next to a Triceratops at night. And this is very reminiscent of that, and I really like that. I can't wait to play as Ankies. Ankies are gonna be really, really cool to play as. I also one thing I think that'd be really cool is having them burrow, because those I like the idea of just adding something completely wacky. Uh, to Ankylosaurus because it's kind of more of an open slate. Having the, it make burrows kind of like how ground slots did, I think it would be really fun. But it's neither here nor there. But um, yeah, I think we finished up today. This is done by Firegate. A really nice a couple bunch of updates that shows that even though things are kind of going a little slow, we're still getting some updates and things going well. It's just uh, kind of the gift that keeps on giving because I love Saurian. And um, I really like to see a lot of design process, things like that, really coming into it. So, yeah, I think this would be a very wonderful place to end the video. So I um, really, 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 really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. Always remember to get the little bell icon to get notified about anything. So, yeah, have a good guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And bye-bye.